Hello, and today we are working on 7-7, -7, our lesson quiz, which is factoring special cases. This relates back to our previous lesson where we were multiplying special cases. And we talked about two different special cases. We had talked about your perfect square trinomial. And we talked about the difference of squares. And so trinomial and difference of squares. And so we talked about when we were multiplying them before we had a perfect square trinomial meant that you had the same binomial. So it was a plus b squared or a minus b squared. And that turned into a squared plus two a b plus b squared, almost the same for this one, but it was a squared minus two a b plus b squared. And when we were multiplying, we were able to use this shortcut in order to get the answer. Or I told you, if you didn't want to use the shortcut, you could always do a plus b times a plus b, a minus b times a minus b, and you could use FOIL or your box method. So now we're doing the reverse. So you're going to be given a squared plus 2ab plus b squared or a squared minus 2ab squared plus b squared, and you're going to have to then factor it into the a plus b squared or a minus b squared. But what's nice about your perfect square trinomial is even if you don't recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial, you can still use your factoring skills to get your answer. The difference of squares is going to be a little bit different. So the difference of squares, remember, was when you had the exact same binomial, but one had a plus in it and one had a minus in it. When we were talking about multiplying, I said, even if you don't remember that shortcut, you can just use FOIL or box method to get your answer. And it would just be, oh, no parentheses. I think I made that mistake the last time too, a squared minus b squared. Well, with multiplying, you can still just multiply and get the answer. When you're factoring, you have no choice but to use the shortcut. So when you have the difference of squares, which is a squared minus b squared, you have to know that that's the difference of squares so that you can factor it into a plus b and a minus b. Remember the difference of squares, difference means subtraction. So it can't be addition. You can only use difference of squares when it's subtraction. And squares refers to perfect squares. So we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how to identify a perfect square trinomial and how to identify the difference of squares. In number one, it says state the type of trinomial and factor. Well, right off the bat, there's three terms. So it can't be the difference of squares because that's only two. Not to mention there's no subtraction. So it looks like it's going to be a perfect square trinomial, but we're going to double check. In order to know for a fact that it's a perfect square trinomial, the first term has to be a perfect square. So you have to be able to take the square root of y squared. You can, it's just y. So check, that's good. Then you have to be able to take the square root of the last term, which is um, gonna be 16. So 16 is also a perfect square, that would be four, so that works. The last thing you have to be able to do is two times a times b. So what that means is I need to be able to do two times, well, a is just the letter y and b is just the number four. So two times y times four would be eight y, which looking at my equation, that also works. So this is gonna be your perfect square trinomial. And in order to factor it, you're gonna take the, the square root of the first term, which is y, the square root of the last term, which is four. And because your first symbol right here is positive, we're gonna say plus. And it's not just y plus four, it's y plus four squared. Because in order to get that, we would have to do y plus four times y plus four. Again, if you don't remember this shortcut, you would still be able to use your factoring and use your X and say what two numbers multiply to give you eight, but add together to give you, or I'm sorry, multiply to give you 16, but add together to give you eight. But you can see it's much faster this way. Okay, 
I'm going to erase this part, but I'm going to leave up the left side so we have those little notes and we're going to move on to number two. So in number two, it says factor the perfect square trinomial. So it literally tells us, yes, it's a perfect square. And so we're going to use our shortcut method. Keeping in mind, if you don't like that shortcut method, you can always still just use your normal factoring method. Well, the square root of the first term is going to be the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of x squared is just x. Then we're going to go to our last term. So here's our first term, and then here's our last term. Um, or actually, instead of writing first and last, I'm going to label them a and b. Um, so b, we're going to take the square root of 36, which is 6. And then we're going to take the first symbol. In this case, it's minus. So it's going to be 5x minus 6, making sure we put squared, because it should be 5x minus 6 times 5x minus 6. OK. On to number three, which you'll notice is two terms. It's the difference of squares, because difference means subtraction. And if you look, the first term is a perfect square, 25 and x squared, and the second term is a perfect square, which is 36. Anytime you want to um, factor the difference of squares, you're going to have two binomials, which they wrote for us. One's going to be plus, one's going to be minus, and it doesn't matter which order you put them in. You're going to take the square root of a, or the square root of the first term. So 25 squared is 5, and x squared is x. And so each one of these will get a 5x. The square root of 36 is 6, so we put a 6 in each. And that's it. That's all you have to do for the difference of squares. So we have 5x minus 6 and 5x plus 6. The square root of the first term goes in each. The square root of the second one goes in each. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Okay, so in number four now, let me erase number three and go to number four. For number four, it says a cone with a height h and a radius r has a volume of one third pi r squared h. If the cone has a height of six inches and a volume um, of eight pi x squared plus 24 pi x plus 18 pi, what is the radius r in terms of x. So the first formula just tells us the general volume formula for a cone. The second one that talks about volume is the actual volume of this cone that we're using. So we need to figure out what r would be. So let's write down, we have, oh, hold on, my pen's not working. There we go. We have 8 pi x squared plus 24 pi x plus 18 pi as our volume. Well, I notice here that we do have a greatest common factor that I can factor out, which would be two pi. And so if I factor out two pi, inside my parentheses, I'm left with four x squared plus 12 x plus nine. What's interesting is normally so you could also just look at this and say I'm going to factor it, but I notice that my first term is a perfect square, my last term is a perfect square, and I'm going to look at the number 12 and ask, okay, 2 times the square root of a is 2, times the square root of b would be 3, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, this is a perfect square trinomial. So I can break right down into my factoring, the square root of 4x squared is 2, x, the square root of 9 is 3, my first symbol is a plus, so I know it's going to be 2x plus 3 squared. And because 2x plus 3 is the same as 2x plus 3, it's going to be letter C. Let's move on to number 5. So in number 5, they want us to factor completely 2x to the fourth y minus 18x squared y to the third. So let's look at this. As is, this is not the difference of squares. It looks like it because there's two terms separated by a subtraction sign, but the first and last term as is is not a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to look and notice that they do have a greatest common factor. 
I can factor a two out of both terms. And then when I'm looking at my letters, my variables, they both have an X, which the smallest exponent is two, and they both have a Y, which the smallest exponent is one. So when I take out that greatest common factor, two divided by two is one, X to the fourth divided by X squared is X squared, Y divided by Y, that just cancels out. And then I have negative 18 divided by two is negative nine, X squared cancels, and then Y cubed divided by Y would be Y squared. Now what happens is I have this greatest common factor of two X squared Y, if you look inside my parentheses, now the first term is a perfect square, x squared squared, or x squared, take the square root would be x. 9y squared, take the square root would be 3y. So now I have the difference of squares. So initially I didn't, but I was able to use my greatest common factor. Square root of x squared is x. Square root, oh, I have to do it plus and a minus. So plus and minus, um, put an x in each. The square root of nine is three. Square root of y squared is y. And so I have two x squared y is my greatest common factor. And then these are the difference of squares right here, x minus three y and x plus three y. Hope this helped, have a great day.